Swifters, it's Prof G, and it's time to get interactive with our app by adding a button. We'll also cover some additional concepts, including the print command, the console, variables, and the very Swift UI concept of state. So let us commence the hack. If you're new here, welcome. You might want to check out the course playlist so you can see how we got here. Now, as of our last lesson, you have a simple project. It includes the Swift system image in orange and a text view stating, I am an app developer. Now let's add a little functionality to this app. Why don't we put in a button that can change the text that shows up under the Swift? So first, let's make some space for our button code. Click after the closing paren in the text views font style modifier and press return to add a new blank line. Then let's pull up the library. Remember that's shift command L. And if we select this left side option on the toolbar, it looks like a square with a dot in the middle of it. This will show the views library. This is where we can find all the different views that we can add to our app we see we've got a button a color picker a date picker there are so many you see there's a description up here in this case you get a little bit of documentation on how to use whichever view is selected that can be helpful but we're going to ignore that right now and just so you know there are two icons in the upper right corner of the library the one that looks like four squares will switch to icon view i don't know anyone who prefers this so click this again to return to the list view and the button to the right of that will show our high details i always keep the details on i don't think it gets in the way. And now to add a button view, just double click button. And boom, will you look at that? Xcode enters code for us. We see that there's a view named button. It's followed by parentheses. And in between double quotes, it wants the name that's going to be the title of the button. Also note the button has its own set of curly braces. Remember, these act as a container for more lines of code. Inside the curlies, it says action. And the way this works is that when the button view is pressed, the code inside the curlies will execute. Now over here in the preview, we see stacked below the text is a little blue button with the title button. And let's change that button's title. Instead of it saying button, in between the double quotes, let's replace that with click me, exclamation point. And look at that, the button's title is changed. Now while it's neat that you can add code using the library, Frankly, almost all the time, you're just going to type code directly into the editor. So let me show you how to do this for a button. First, let's highlight the entire button code, including its closing curly brace, and delete this. Then type the word button. Now, there are a lot of different button statements in here, and each one of these gives us a button that works slightly differently. But for now, we're going to focus on the most common button, which will give us the code identical to what we got from the library. And the selection we need to make to get that code is button, and in parentheses, underscore, title key colon, action colon. Now, if you can find that in your list, great, but unfortunately, the version of Xcode that I'm using has a bug in it. For some reason, that most common version of the button isn't showing right away the first time code completion pops up for button. And this was actually a bug in the last release version of Xcode, so it's been a problem for over a year. So I'll show you what we need to do. I'm going to press Escape. That closes code completion. Then I'll backspace a couple of characters and start to retype the word button. And ah, here it is button underscore title key colon action colon. And with this option highlighted, just press return. Xcode enters some code, but it doesn't look quite like the code we just saw. Well, why don't you follow along typing the exact same characters that I type so that you can quickly navigate around and change the arguments in the view. Now, at this point, you should have title key localized string key highlighted in blue. Now, consider that to be just a string. That's going to be the title for our button. So we'll type open double quote. Xcode adds the closing double quote. The cursor's in between and we'll enter click me exclamation point. Now, this is very important, press the tab key, and you'll see the highlighting jumps over to the second argument. That's the action for this button. Now, with the action highlighted, I'm going to show you how we can make a change to this format. Most developers write their code in the format I'm about to show you, and you'll see it in most of the sample code that you read, so we might as well learn about it now. So with this action highlighted, press return, and oh, Xcode reformats this action part of the code. Now, curly braces act as a container in Xcode. In Swift, the curly braces container is referred to as a closure. You'll hear that word a lot. And in this closure, we're going to include the code that we want to execute as an action when the button is pressed. Now, by pressing return like that, Xcode rewrote our closure into a standard, easier to read way to write code, this is called the trailing closure format. It adds the closure as the trailing or last part of the statement. So notice that open curly is just after the closing parenthesis on the first line of the button view statement. And for starters, just to make sure that our button is working, we'll print out the phrase, you clicked me, whenever you click the button. To do this, we'll just change the code inside of our action closure so that it includes a print statement. So with the code placeholder highlighted inside my closure, I'm going to type the word print, open parentheses, double quote, Xcode kindly adds the closing double quote and closing parentheses, positioning my cursor in between those double quotes. And I'm going to enter, you clicked me, exclamation point, as a string to print. 
So take a second to understand this. This is really important. To create a button, we add a button view. And the way we've done this is with this highlighted code here. This is considered a single statement to create a button. And it consists of two parts. The title, which is the string for the button's label. That's the text that we see in the button. And this action closure, the stuff between the curly braces, it's a block of code that executes when the button is pressed. Now we only have one statement in the closure right now between the curlies, but we're gonna add more statements in a bit. So again, this is the button, two parts, the string for the label, and the closure, that's the code between the curlies, that's the action that executes when the button is clicked. Now follow along with me as I demonstrate this. Click the click me button once, and we see nothing. Now here's the thing. Our app doesn't have a place to show the output of a print statement. We'll eventually learn how we can update the string inside the text view, but right now when we click the button, the action did actually run. It did print the string you clicked me, but we don't see it. When we use the print statement, the output shows up not in the app itself, but in an area of Xcode called the console. So where's the console? Well, it's in an area called the debug area. How do we find the debug area? If you move your cursor to the icon in the lower right, it looks like a square with a little line in the bottom. The tooltip says, show debug area. This acts as a show hide toggle. Click it, and oh, a new pane shows up at the bottom of Xcode. This is called the debug pane, and I can see the string you clicked me printed out. Now, just in case you're not seeing this in the debug pane, there are two more icons in the lower right-hand corner of the debug pane. The leftmost one hides and shows the variable view. We'll talk about that in a future lesson. The one to the right shows and hides the console view. Make sure that's showing. When it's clicked, it should be tinted, and the console should be open. So now follow along. Click the Click Me button one more time. I see the print statement ran again. Down here in the console, we have another line that says you clicked me. Click a third time, a fourth time. If you keep clicking, more statements are printing, but they're just scrolling up. If you move your cursor inside the console view, you can scroll this up or down. Now you might want to clear out the contents of the console. Pro tip to do this, you want to click inside the console area, then press Command K. Do that with me now. Cool, the console is cleared. And we can click the button again. More print statements show up. Now know that Command K clears the console, it doesn't restart your code. Pressing the Live button restarts the code, but it doesn't clear the console. And I should say, pressing the Live button should restart the code. Again, I'm using a beta version of Xcode. Sorry about this, but there is a bug in my Xcode where pressing the Play button, the Live button down here in the canvas does not work. But if you press the Option key with Command and P all at the same time, that will restart the preview. It does exactly the same thing as pressing the Live Play button if that button were working. So when you see me restarting my code and I'm not pressing Live Play, that's because I'm pressing Option Command P to get around this Xcode bug. So if I go up here and change You Clicked Me to Ouch, then I click on the button. Xcode actually restarted the code when I was done typing Ouch. When I click the button in here, my restarted code is running. It just never cleared out the console. So if I want to clear out the console, Command K does that. So cool. Print is neat, but it's not very practical for writing code in an app that you're going to give an end user. Print is really useful when you're trying to debug your code or trying to figure out what your code does in certain actions. We will use print quite a bit in our future lessons, but for now what we want to do is we want to learn how to change the string that's inside of our text view. And to do that, we'll need to use a variable. I'll show you how to use variables in Swift UI. To do this, I'll first create an error because when we want to use variables inside our actions in Swift UI, things are a little quirky. They're a little bit different than most programming languages. But after I create that error, I'll show you how to fix it and hopefully you'll understand concepts better. So in programming, a variable is just a named container that holds data. Now this container that's the variable is really a spot in your computer's memory, but I like to think of it as a box with a name on the side of the box and that can hold data inside the box. In Swift, we first have to create the container. We create the variable and we do this by declaring the variable. And we do this by using the var statement, V-A-R. Now we follow the keyword var with the variable's name. The convention in Swift is to use lower cam case to name variables. This means that variables should start with a letter, they shouldn't contain any spaces, and they should be entirely in lowercase unless the variable contains one or more words, and then each subsequent word should be capitalized. So we might name a variable message, all lowercase, 
or response message, one word, no spaces, but with the letter M capitalized. And this format is called lower camel case since the capital letters are sort of like humps on a camel. So at this point, we've declared a variable called message. You can consider that like a box that holds data. And we only use the var keyword once for each variable it's created. Once the variable has been created, we don't need to declare it or create it again. But let's put some data inside this variable, inside the container, inside the box. Now to set the contents of a variable equal to something, we simply use the equal sign. Let's set this equal to the string, I am a programmer. Now what this entire statement does is we've declared or created a message variable, a box to hold data. That's what the var statement does, followed by the name of the variable, message. Then we use the equal sign to put stuff in the box. In this case, it's the string, I am a programmer. Now when we write a statement like this, when we declare a variable using the var statement, and we give it data using the equal sign, we say that giving data part is initializing a variable. So message is both declared and initialized on the same line. So now any place in our code where we refer to this variable message, it'll use the data inside our variable, the string I am a programmer. Let's try this out. Now over here in Swift UI, if we want to declare a variable to use throughout our file, we're going to declare it above the body view and below the content view struct. Now you might notice that this word body actually starts with var. It's a declared variable as well. We actually don't need to worry about why or how this works right now. Just know that the stuff in the curly braces for this body variable is all the code that expresses our app's interface. And if we want to declare a variable to be used throughout this file, we're going to do this just above var body, just below struct content view. So in between those two statements, I'll add a new line. Xcode indents it for me. I'm gonna enter var space message of the name of my variable, equal sign, double quotes, I am a programmer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the literal string in our text view with our message variable. So follow along, highlight the text down here inside of our text view, including the double quotes, and over the top of that, start typing message, M-E-S, and ho ho! Xcode code completion shows us that it knows about the message variable. And in code completion, we see that Xcode knows the message variable holds a string, the P that we see up here actually stands for property. More on this later, but a variable that's part of the content view is actually considered to be a property of the content view. Don't let that confuse you. It's okay to ignore that for now. But if we look over at our preview, we see the old text in here. I am a developer. Now with message highlighted, press return and ho ho! Now the text view has I am a programmer showing up. What's going on? Well, our code runs from top to bottom. The message variable is declared. It's initialized to I am a programmer with capital letters for each of the words. Then the body runs. The V stack is created. It creates an image of our Swift, which is modified to be resizable, scale to fit, and to be an orange. Then we create the text view. The argument in text view is that message variable. The contents of the message variable were initialized to I am a programmer with capital letters. That's what's showing up in our preview. Nice. By the way, since we defined message up here above body, we can use it throughout the body code. So let's replace the ouch string inside our print statement with the variable message. Then open the console, clear it with a command K if it isn't cleared already, and each time you click on the click me button, you see I am a programmer printed proudly to the console. Very cool. So now I'm going to close my console, and you might be wondering, hmm, We've initialized our variable up here in the string I am a programmer. If we wanted to change the string when the button is clicked, can we just set message equal to another string? Yes, we can, but we'll have to perform two steps. Let me show you. We can replace the print statement with message. It's already declared, so we don't use var here. Set it equal to, how about the phrase awesome between double quotes? And oh, bummer, Xcode shows us an error. This is the error that I told you I was gonna deliberately create. It says, cannot assign property, self is immutable. Now this is not a very friendly message for the new programmer, but what Xcode is trying to tell us is that the variable that we created, message, can't be changed. Mutate means changed, immutable means it cannot be changed. So Xcode is telling us that our message variable can't be changed. Wait, we can't vary a variable? That doesn't seem right. Well, that is true. And the reason for this is because our content view is a data structure called a struct. Now more on that in a later lesson. Don't let the additional information confuse you. What's important to know right now is in order to make a message mutable so that we can vary the contents of our variable, we need to make a slight modification to its declaration up top. We're gonna precede the keyword var with the at sign. You can type that with shift two on the US keyboard, followed by the word state with a capital S, no space between at and state. 
make sure there is a space between at state and var. Now what this does is it sets up the variable so it can be mutated, so it can be changed. The error goes away. Now let's press the click me button and oh, we see the contents of the message variable has changed. Programmer, you've got some interactivity in your app. Nice work. Now if we click again, message is being updated again, but it's just the word awesome is being replaced with that same word awesome, so we don't see any change. But if we click on the live button in preview, this little play button, and again, there's a bug in my Xcode, so my live button isn't working. I have to type option command P. I am a programmer shows up in text view because the app restarted. Press the click me button. We see the text view changes. It says awesome, and that is pretty awesome. Now here's an important point about Swift UI. Whenever a variable changes, Swift UI redraws the views in the user interface to reflect that change. So when we click on the click me button, Swift UI updates the contents of the message variable. Swift UI throws out the old user interface and it super rapidly redraws the new user interface using any changes that occurred. Now we don't see the screen flash. This actually happens super quickly and super efficiently. You might think that redrawing your user interface sounds inefficient, but do know that the folks at Apple wrote this to be super, super efficient. Efficient. So here's the important thing. In Swift UI, everything is based on the contents of its data. Change the data, change the variables, the old interface is thrown away, new stuff is created super quickly and super efficiently. You'll sometimes hear Swift UI referred to as a declarative framework. So you just declare how things will look and Swift UI will take care of updating everything for you. Now the thing about the state variable is that that's one thing that isn't thrown away. It sort of lurks off to the side. So even though the interface is thrown away and recreated, the state of this variable, the contents of the variable can be mutated and its changes will influence how the interface is redrawn. That's it. Change something in Swift UI, the old interface is thrown away, state variables are kept separately, but any changes to state are going to reflect in the redrawn interface. So recreating the interface based on the data as that data changes is how Swift UI works. And if that seems a bit confusing right now, hang in there. We'll build lots of apps together, and hopefully the concepts will become more clear the more you work with them. Now, before we finish this lesson, I want to offer one more tip. It's considered good programming practice to add the word private in between the state keyword and the var keyword. Now, any variable labeled private like this will only be accessible inside the struct in which it was created. And later on, you'll see that we have things like different structs in different files, and each one of those will represent a different screen for our user interface. Now, it's too early for you to realize this, but at some point, a few apps in the future, we're going to be writing apps with multiple files. Now, at some point, those files are going to have different structs for different user interfaces and any variable that we have that has the word private before it will only be available to that struct this is going to cut down on possible programming errors again the explanation might not mean a lot to you at this point but just remember it's good practice to add the keyword private in between state and var but swifter once again we've had a lot of big learning in this lesson we've learned to create a button both with the library and by typing code directly into our editor we learned about the trailing closure format and how to get xcode to switch to this format we learned about the print command the console variables and swift ui special state keyword that allows us to mutate or change the contents of a variable and we learned that even though swift ui throws out the old interface and redraws the interface when values change the state variables aren't thrown away they're sort of parked off to the side so their contents can remain at whatever the last state was set to those are a lot of concepts we'll learn just a few more things in our next lesson that'll offer a challenge for you to apply everything you've learned so far and after that i'll demonstrate the solution so that you can check your work I hope you're enjoying our lessons. Continue to hack.